all, welcome to Facebook Live. Uh, my name is Siti, I'm with the Siti BTO Youth Group. And here I have Carlos, which is, who is a member, member as well. And we also have Dr. Zerbo with us today. We're super excited. Um, so I'll ask my question. So Dr. Zerbo, um, the Article 14 conference will be one of uh, the many that's been um, held, held in the past years to push for the, um, for the treaty entry into force. So do you think that due to the current political, uh, geopolitical tensions, uh, we have a new momentum and a new heightened sense of urgency to actually um, get, you know, finish this business that we've started? Uh, if yes, what is one outcome that you would like to see from this year conference? First of all, I would hope that uh, this Article 14 conference at this particular time at the General Assembly uh, fits with the nuclear tests announced by the DPRK. One would have hoped that that would be an opportunity to seize a momentum towards the entry into force of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty so that we finish what we started, getting this treaty into force. With the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty into force, there is no room for testing. Not only that there is no room for testing, but we're preparing the backbone of the architecture of future non-proliferation and disarmament agreement. And that's what we need, the low-hanging fruit that the CTBT is. Awesome, sounds great. All right, I'll pass it off to my uh, friend Carlos. Hi guys, so for those of you just tuning in, uh, we're here live from the UN headquarters with Dr. Lazina Servo, the Executive Secretary of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, which is based in Vienna. Um, Dr. Zerbo, you've spoken a lot about uh, in, in the past about the role of youth um, in getting this, uh, advocating for this treaty, and, and what do you think? We have a, a question from a youth group member, his name is uh, Metin. And he wants to know what young people in his country can do um, to support a world free from nuclear tests. I focus in the past two years on youth because youth have to be part of what we're trying to prepare, a future world for them. It's their generation that will probably know and witness a world free from nuclear weapon. So for them to witness and enjoy they have to be part of this endeavor for this noble cause that is putting an end to nuclear testing for preparing a world free for, uh, of nuclear weapon. And that's why the best way to do is to involve the next generation of scientists and policy makers who will make sure that the planet, our planet, is safe and secure. And you described uh, the CTBT in the past as a sort of low-hanging fruit or the next step in the nuclear um, verification and, and disarmament. Why do you describe it this way and what is recent situations um, pose an opportunity for the CTBT's entry into force? I describe the CTBT as a low-hanging fruit for several reasons. One of them is the fact that we have 183 countries that have signed this treaty, 166 that have ratified. This is over 90 percent of the international community that is saying no and never to nuclear testing. We have eight only eight, but eight too many countries that are holding hostage, if I can use this word, the entry into force of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. We have to get them there. They have to follow the majority of the world. And that's why I'm saying we are at the end of the marathon. Being at the end of the marathon is getting this treaty to cross the line so that we finish what we started. And that's why it is a low-hanging fruit. Another reason is that for more than a decade, we haven't had any tangible arms control agreement adhered to or put in our pocket. The GCPOA, the Iran agreement is one of them. That's all what we can put on the table and say that we have something tangible. The CTBT is the next one and I think we should all push for the entry into force of the CTBT and we're counting on you guys. It's your job, it's your future planet, you have to make sure it's safe and secure and we're here to help you and you're here to help us. But with social media, you are the boss of the world and we're following you. Wow. Right. Well, that's certainly uh, engaging thoughts, especially for all the young people tuning in across the world. Setu, uh, what kind of uh, questions would you pose to Dr. Zervo? Thank you.
um, this is really exciting. I think it's awesome that we have so many young people here today, you know, witnessing being part of this um, this event. Um, so I know we talk a lot about young people. So I would just like to ask um, if there is, you know, one thing that you would like to see from, you know, the youth that are already involved to try to even recruit more youth, you know, get you know, raising more awareness for more, even more youth to be involved like, globally in this, you know, in this fight. What, what, what is it that you are expecting from us, really, specifically? First of all, let me say that I've been proud and I've been impressed by the youth involved in the CTBT youth group and pushing for the entry into force of this treaty. The right article, they, have, they bring a fresh mind to this endeavor that we've had for the past 20 years. When I say for the past 20 years, most of them are younger than the treaty. And that's what is good in this endeavor. So they write articles, they talk, they speak up their mind, they try to bring those who have negotiated the treaty, negotiated the treaty to understand that the world today is different from the time the treaty was negotiated for several reasons. One of the reasons is that we have now an international monitoring system and a verification regime that has proven its worth. But at the same time, we have the threat from the DPRK, a threat that could move and lead to more countries thinking that there is room to develop nuclear weapon, and we must stop that. And you guys are part of it. The youth is part of it, and then I want to believe that you're the only one who can prepare your own future, and we will accompany you, and that's what I'm here for. Dr. Zerbo, what would you describe the national security value of the CTBT, especially the international monitoring system and the data center? to uh, the countries that take part um, in the organization and the treaty? I'll take the example of the United States because this is where we are. We are in New York. Uh, the international monitoring system, its data and product are mostly used by the United States. We had uh, leaders of this country talking about their contribution up to 20%, 25% of uh, the contribution, I mean the, the budget of the UN organization, it's the same for the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. But there is more value for money in this CTBT because the US, and especially the Air Force Technical Center in Florida, that is the national data center of the US, uses our data and uses our product in their solution. There's no other way and no other institutional framework where you can have data and product in the search to detect nuclear test explosion better than the CTBT. Nowhere you can find that. And I think the U.S. gained in getting data from this organization because they can't have stations spread around the world as we do. They have to use our station and they have to use the agreement that we have with countries where international monitoring system facilities are. Well, thank you, Dr. Zerber. This concludes our Facebook Live. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you get involved. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you all.